with Mark Stinson, and I, um, Mark, I was just going to ask you how um, the Tiny Houses project would benefit other cities. I know you're working with one in Greensboro. Yes, and I just started about three months ago working with them, and uh, what they do is some of their high schools, the construction part of their high school, some of them have building going on, and they built one house and started uh, the first full complete house there on our property there in Greensboro, North Carolina and then we have started another one from the ground up and we got five more to go which is a process and if we have plenty of people willing to come and help and donate their time and, and materials and stuff like that it's the main thing because it gets expensive but uh, volunteering time uh, if you got any kind of handyman or construction type uh, background or plumbing, electrical or whatever, it can all be used uh, to do all this and to keep the prices down and everything so that a homeless person can move in there and they can rent it pretty cheap. Um, you know, they help get in the houses, I mean get into the house, but they also help with trying to get them jobs or whatever they may need to or whatever. and. Also, they work with veterans uh, to get them housed now. We got one house that somebody donated that uh, we've completely gutted it and everything and took the side and all. And we're remodeling, rewater, rewiring, putting new water lines and stuff like that in there as well. And uh, really, if you want to help the homeless out uh, to get them back on their feet, this is a golden opportunity because all these tiny houses have is a bedroom, kitchen, uh, shower, and bathroom, you should say, and a uh, washer and dryer, you know, your needed necessities. And you can do it in a community setting. Um, you can also have them to where they're just the buildings where they can sleep and then have a community area. There's several different ways and you can always go on the web page and look at tiny houses and see what all they do. Ours is going to be totally energy efficient and self-reliant with everything and uh, actually it's in the city so we got uh, city water and sewage being connected which is costly but uh, for the overall price, it's, it's well worth it to house somebody, let them live in there for however long they may need to live in there, whether it be a year or two or several years, so that they can get back on their feet and move on to something bigger and better if they choose to or whatever. But the main thing is to get them established back into a productive member of society and stuff and help them to regain hope and that they are worthy and worth something because a lot of times being homeless takes away a lot of your pride and character. And uh, also if churches wanted to get involved, they could also uh, adopt a homeless person and work with them for a year or two because there so many different people in the church group usually, you know, that can do things for people but they may not know how to do it or go about getting in touch with them and if they adopted one then everybody could pitch in and help do that kind of thing. That's great. And so um, and their rents only uh, it's on a sliding scale it's whatever they make uh, pretty much you know they're charged a little amount just for rent enough that they can afford it. Do they have to have a job to get in, or they have to... Uh... From what I'm understanding, they'll have to have a, a job or have a disability check or something to get in, and then there'll be pay rate, uh, be on sliding scale, oh, whatever good. they make, and yes. to, to help them, you know, kind of get by and afford a place to live and kind of have, like, their own castle, you yes. know, instead of a tent or somewhere out in the cold, it would be somewhere where they can stay good and warm. You know, like a little small apartment type thing. So, yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty neat. Well, thank you. Mm, thank you. You have a great day and God bless you. Too.